Hi there, it is time for another selection tool in your arsenal, and it is the Mighty Channel Mask. It's been around a while, and it's perfect for when you need to select, say, out of focus grass like this. There we go, <laughs> easily done. But let's say you already know how to do a channel mask. Don't worry, there's some stuff in here for you as well. Imagine if there was a brush where you could just kind of like paint across and remove all the ghosting. It is true, my friends, this brush exists, and I will show you in this next tutorial. Let's get in there. Let's make it even better. We're gonna love the brush. First up, let's open up our files. They're in our O2 selections and masking, and it's all of these guys. It's channel mask one all the way through to O5. Quick little tip before we get going. Uh, if you hold down control and hit tab, okay, on your keyboard, you can cycle through the open tabs along the top here. That works on both formats, Mac or PC. But what we really came here for is channel masks, and I just quickly before we get started, up until uh, Photoshop released the select uh, subject and the select and mask function, all I did for kind of advanced masking was channel mask, the thing we're gonna do now. Because these two options that we learned previously are so good, I don't use channel mask half as much anymore. Basically, I use them for the same sort of principle. I need kind of like, say this kind of out of focus, what would normally be here, but this, okay, these two here in combination are so much better now in my opinion. The reason I still use channel mask and the reason I still include it in this advanced course is because uh, if we click select subject, it tries to find a person's face and there is no face to be found. Okay, so couldn't find subject, click okay. So there's times where I just need to, I wanna select all this grass, but it's super hard, right? Quick selection tool is not gonna do it. Magic wand's got no hope. I might do okay with a color range, but, but there are some perks to a channel mask and you need it in your arsenal to be an advanced Photoshop user. You don't want to turn up at the advanced Photoshop party and not know what a channel mask is. Even though it's getting used less, it's kind of one of those badges of honor like uh, like the lens flare was when you were new. So how does this work? I'm going to do it super quick, half to impress you, half to show you how quick it is once you know the, once you get into the flow, then I'll back it up and go a bit more step by step. So basically we go to the channels panel, we pick one of these three, okay, the one that has the most contrast, blue does. So I'm gonna right click it, duplicate it, click OK, turn this on, that off. Then I use levels, and I'm just trying to accentuate the contrast between the background and the foreground. Okay, I'm lifting this up, trying to find this kind of medium ground here. Once I click OK, I can blot in this stuff at the bottom here. I'm using my paintbrush tool, set to normal. I'm using black, I'm making it nice and big. I'm just gonna kind of paint it all out. Get a bit smaller, get some of this stuff in there. Spend a little bit more time. I'm not. Turn it into a selection. Go back into my layers panel and add a layer mask. First of all, reverse it out, invert the selection and add a layer mask. And you can see that will totally kind of freak you out <laughs> how fast it went there. But I, I guess I just want to show you the flow that I'm going through when I'm doing uh, selections for something like this and how easy it can be. Because when I teach this live, often people freak out because there are quite a few steps. And don't worry, you won't probably remember them off by heart. I only remember them because I'm a trainer and I have to teach it all the time. When I wasn't, when I was just freelancing, I would go, okay, channel masks, they're good. Come back to this video and just run through it every time you need to do it. And that's just the way it is. There's a few steps involved, but the results are pretty cool. Let me grab this and add it to the background here. You can see a pretty convincing mask with very little effort put into getting it perfect. So let's back it right up. I'll show you a cool little trick is file revert because we only have so many undos, right? So if you go to file revert, it goes all the way back to when the document was last saved. And in this case, it's way back before I did all my channel madness. Let's look at it step by step and explain it a little bit. So it's channels that do the heavy lifting here. Basically a channel is just, uh, this document is RGB. You can see it up here in the tab. And that just means the computer makes all of these lovely colors out of a mixture of red, green, and blue. Now we're really not worried about channels at the moment, we're just gonna use and abuse them to get our selection. And what you're doing is you're looking through all three of these for the one that has the most contrast. In this case, blue has a really clear contrast with the background. It's not always the case, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's green, so toggle through them all. Once you've found one, you've gotta duplicate it. Right click it, duplicate channel. I'm gonna call it my mask for no reason. And I'm gonna turn it on and turn that one off. I don't wanna destroy the red, green, and blue. I just wanna work on this, my special little mask. We're gonna delete it in a second. So with it selected, we're gonna to go to levels, 
So image adjustment levels. We're not gonna use the fancy adjustment levels. We're gonna use old school destroy the layer levels, these ones here. And all we're looking to do is, you can see the sky here, it's quite gray still. So I wanna kind of increase the whites. Basically you can you adjust these guys any way you like. All you need to do is have a really strong white versus black. So that's all I'm doing, dragging them left and right and just see, like if I go too far this way, it starts kind of bleeding in. There's a little bit of like, I, I've done this so many times that I kind of got a good feeling. What you might have to do is get to this point and say, all right, I'm gonna try this and then come back if it's not quite right. Okay, I'm gonna crank the blacks up just a little bit as well. And I should point out, I'm looking at the edge between this and this, I'm not worried about here, because you saw earlier on, I just black that in with a big paintbrush. It's this edge, this contrast between the uh, background and the foreground here that I want to, I guess, get as sharp as I can. It feels okay. Click okay. Now what I want to do is kind of fix this bottom stuff here because I'm gonna use my paintbrush. Where are you there? Set it to black. What kind of hardness? Somewhere in there, 80. I'm just gonna paint this in black. Okay, I'm gonna do this to down the bottom here quite rough. And then as I get closer, I'm gonna lower my brush and get a little bit nicer about the whole experience. Because I know that that is not a hole looking through. I know that's the sky, okay? But I know this is just light that's reflecting on the grass. So I'm gonna go in here and just kind of fix this up a little bit. We'll go through in, after we do this exercise to show you a few extra little tricks to tidy this up a little nicer. But you saw the end result here. I put in less effort <laughs> and it came still with a really good result. Channel Master awesome. All right, so I got the basics in there. Now what I wanna do is load it as a selection. Okay, you can click on this little icon down the bottom here and it loads that black versus white as a selection. Now, this guy here is, his job is done. I'm gonna click on RGB to turn all of these on. Just make sure the eyeball is off on the mask or you can bin it, like we just don't need that anymore. People get a little caught up on that channel being part of it. Really, we just used it to get our little marching ants here. Back to layers. At the moment, we have the sky selected. It really depends on your image. Sometimes you'll have it the right way around, sometimes you won't. If I click on layer mask here, it's the opposite. So I'm gonna to go to select inverse, and now add my layer mask. And hey presto, you can see it was pretty bad along the top there, and it's still a pretty good mask. I'm gonna grab my move tool, I'm gonna to go command C, command V on my Mac. Actually, I'll probably do it the other way around. I'm gonna drag U here, use my little shortcut, command shift, square bracket, send it to the back. Control shift square bracket on a PC. You can see a pretty convincing mask. Let's look at a couple other things you can do with channel masks to get the most from them. Let's go to channel mask three. And I lie, we're not gonna do channel mask three together because it's very similar to this first one here. I'm gonna set that as your homework in the next video. You can do it now on boards if you want. What I wanna do is let's go to mask, uh, channel mask four and five. These are the ones that I'm gonna combine. You saw them at the beginning. We run into the same problems. We can't use select uh, subject, but we're probably gonna use a little bit of select and mask just to kind of push this a little bit further. So same thing as before, channels. I use these shortcuts here. If you're on a PC, is it control three, four, five? Check whatever the shortcut is there. So I'm going, holding down on my command key and going three, four, five. I'm not looking, I'm just toggling through them all, just seeing. And don't worry about down here. You're looking at the transition between the sky and the background, and they're all really similar actually, because the background's pretty much white. I feel like that's my one. You could argue all three of those ones. So I'm gonna duplicate it, duplicate, oh, <laughs> don't delete it, uh, duplicate it. Gonna give it a name, I'm not gonna give it a name, because we're gonna bin it in a second. So nobody's gonna know we didn't name our layers. So with boo copy selected, all the rest of them off, Otherwise you get this kind of weird colors going on. Make sure it's selected. And remember, we're gonna to go to our levels and we're just looking to increase this contrast. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit and I'm just looking at, if we go too far, you'll end up with this, it bleeds over the edge and looks not very good. Okay, so I'm gonna increase the white a little bit to get the sky pure white. I feel like that's a pretty good one. Looks like it's pretty strong black versus white. Click OK, I'll zoom out, and I'm gonna blot in the bottom here using my brush tool, nice big brush. We're gonna add a little bit extra to this one, I promise. So we've got a selection, we're gonna load it as a selection. 
we're gonna click on RGB. You can leave that there. There's nothing wrong with leaving it there. Go to channels, inverse the selection. I'm using the shortcut Command Shift I on a Mac. That's Control Shift I on a PC. And I've applied the layer mask. Now let's go and add it to our background. So actually I'm gonna bring this guy in to the other one. So move tool, you come in here, friend. Wanna know a cool extra little shortcut? You don't have a choice, I'm gonna <laughs> show you anyway. And um, when you're dragging from one image to another and you kind of like, it ends up in weird places, right? If you do that exact same technique, so move tool, drag, 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 hold, 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 hold in the shift key when you let go. And it doesn't put it willy nilly, it puts it exactly kind of top left. Really handy. Okay, mildly handy. I'm gonna move it underneath. And you can see it did a pretty good job, but because I've gone for such an extreme background, okay, it's gone from light to dark, you can see they're kind of ghosting around the edges. So I'll show you two ways of fixing this type of thing. One you've learned before, one you haven't. So I'm gonna click on my layer mask. Even though we started with a channel mask, okay, we dove into the channels and messed around in there, we can still click on the mask and go to select a mask. I'm making sure mine's against on black. And you can play around with the radius. In this case here, shift edge is probably gonna work. It doesn't work great though. Okay, it works kind of too far down into the image here. So I'm gonna hit cancel. What I wanna do is show you a cool little trick and it's to use your paintbrush, paintbrush B key, and to switch it from normal to overlay. I'm gonna make it appropriate brush size. I'm gonna make it kind of fuzzy there, make it a little bit bigger and try and impress you. Look how good that is. I loved it when I found this option. Instead of trying to control it all with select a mask, you can just use your brush tool with overlay and just kind of tidy up the edges. It doesn't have to be a channel mask you've started with. It can be with any mask. All it really does is gets rid of the kind of in-between zone. So let's undo that and kind of have a look. If you hold down the Alt key on a PC or Option key on a Mac and click on the mask, it just shows you it in black and white, which is handy, right? I'm on overlay, I'm on brush tool, Black is my foreground color and watch this. Can you see it just like shrinks it in or at least gets rid of the kind of gray areas. Can you see there's white here in the middle and there's black there, but there's this kind of like little bits of gray and that's what the overlay option is doing as a brush. I'm gonna zoom out, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna hold down my option key on my Mac, hold key on a PC, go back in here and just kind of fix that up. One thing I might wanna do as well is you can use that same key. I'm gonna go back into here. You can see there's some like non, like see all this kind of gray area down here. You can do the opposite. Just flick it over to white, make an appropriate brush size and you can do some pretty kind of easy fixes. And you can see you can get, get quite close to the edge without wrecking it. If you're just using a white paintbrush, it can be a little tricky. So we're trying to go fast. This tool is perfect for it. Add it all up, jump back out, back in. It's looking pretty cool. All right, so that's gonna be it for channel mask. Actually, one last bit. Let's use that same little tool back here at the beginning, click on the mask, and we're gonna use our brush tool overlay. I've set it to black now, and I'm gonna lower the opacity just a little bit. If you've got the brush tool selected, the opacity, you can drag it down, that's fine. But cool little trick is just to tap two on your keyboard, Four, you can see it's changing up here. Six, <laughs> seven. Okay, so I'm gonna just lower it down to maybe 30% and just kind of work these edges a little bit. Just, there's a couple of fluffy bits that maybe aren't super realistic. And now we're actually finished. So that is a channel mask. Maybe bookmark this video. I know when I was learning channel masks, they're super cool, but really hard to remember what to do. It's quite process driven, but there you go. All right, let's get on to the next video.